Okay. Got nobody yet. Uh oh. Nope, we got nobody here yet. Well, if you guys are watching this later, um, I am loading the feed wagon here for the cows. Yeah, we got five people, yep. Yeah, so um, I'm loading up the feeder wagon for the milk cows here right now. And uh, how is everybody out there? Hey, Farmall Fanatic! <laughs> Oh, the weather out here today, it's not too bad. Uh, we were supposed to get, uh, I don't know, five, six inches of snow last night. And uh, the weatherman, for once, well, he was wrong. And yeah, so that's kind of nice. We missed out on the snow. Most of it went to the, yeah, I'm getting sick and tired of snow. You got a little snow there, Tim? Yeah, hi, nice to see Anthony from Cornwall, England. Yeah, let me turn the camera around here a sec so you can see me. There, whoops. Hi. <laughs> uh, you don't want to sit here and watch me the whole time. Hey, Jeff from Wisconsin. Uh, can't see with my sunglasses on. Yeah, so we lucked out. We did not get any snow last night. Oh, I'm sick and tired of it. Cold and snow. Oh yeah, thanks Jeff. I'm glad you enjoyed the videos. Ah, uh, yes Nick, I have always worked in the farm. Uh, I've lived on this farm uh, my entire life. Um, Yep, this is the farm I grew up on. Hey there, Tim from West Michigan. How are you today? <laughs> Hope you guys aren't, uh, don't got a bunch of snow over that way. Sorry, the video's a little shaky here. I'm trying to do it all one-handed here. Um, we got a pile of snow on both sides of the bag here. Oh, you didn't know they still had dairy out our way? Yes, they, there is dairy out here. Uh, it's not as much as it used to be. Hey, Kevin from Andover, New York. Yep, there's not very much dairy left out here. Uh, a lot of the small dairies have kind of went by the wayside. Getting snow in Iowa. Five inches. Oh, you could keep it down there. <laughs> we don't want it up here. I have a, I got an older brother that lives in Iowa. He lives in Northwest Iowa. Surprised he didn't send me any uh, pictures of snow this morning. Oh, it's kind of hard to get this hay out of this bag. It's kind of, kind of froze in there a little bit. Yeah, that's what the landscape looks like around here. Just open, full of snow. Nothing but snow, snow, snow. Uh, yes, we do feed corn silage. Yeah, I think the silo right now is about, I don't know, it's gotta be getting close to half empty or so. I'll turn you guys around here and you can see it later. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we've got some pretty big snow drifts right over there. They're just, every time it's, the wind blows, they keep getting bigger. Um, ah, yes, we do have snow for this long. Huh. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just like, this spring when the snow melts, I mean, like, I want spring to come, but yet I don't at the same time because I know when all the snow melts, there is going to be a, uh, it's going to be a muddy, muddy mess around here. I mean, it's like right over here by this bag over here. Uh, last year, the tractor was digging deep ruts. 
Uh, no, we do not feed our own soybeans. Um, we could, but we just, it's logistical issues why we don't. Um, yes, the feed wagon does mix it a little bit. Um, if you go back a few videos ago, I do have a video where I actually showed when I was out feeding. It's got a riser chain in there, so it does mix it some. Yep. My brother and I, we were just talking about it last night, sometime trying to someday invest in a TMR wagon. Ain't gonna be this year. There's just not the funds available to invest in one this year. Which we would really like to invest in a TMR wagon, but uh, uh, I'm gonna spin this around. It's me again. <laughs> um, yeah, we would like. Uh, I'm gonna switch it back. Hey, Ontario, hey guy. Uh, my finger keeps covering up the camera when I have it this way. Yeah. How's the milk price? Um, it's just a little bit better this year than it was last year. Hi, is hi Justin from Ontario, Canada. Yeah, the milk price has improved just a little bit this year. Um, not much, but anything is better than going going downhill. Um, yeah, anybody that doesn't know right now that organic uh, market, there's a surplus of organic milk out there, and uh, um, there's a lot of con smaller conventional dairies that uh, was looking for. Um, they were looking for a better market for the milk, so they they switched over to organic, and before everybody knew it, the organic uh, market was flooded. Um, and I think there is there is kind of some problems why nobody caught it soon enough but it was just kind of everybody got uh, caught off guard by it so right now everybody's kind of put a cap on the um, organic milk right now they're right most of the um, companies aren't accepting any new producers at the moment which is kind of frustrating but um, Um, right now, going organic depends on what you're doing. If you're doing the dairy, um, it might take a while. I don't know how, how many years it's going to take, but if you're doing the grain, I think the grain is worth it right now. Um, organic corn is somewhere is around pretty close to nine dollars a bushel, um, and it depends on like the soybeans. Uh, soybeans, if you do food grade. Um, you can get uh, over. You can get up to twenty dollars a bushel for for or, um, food grade soybeans, um, like seventeen to eighteen if they're feed grade. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know it. I know Organic Valley, they said that they did need some milk at one time, but I know that they're holding off right now. Uh, you know, like anybody, they're not signing up any right now. That's that's just what I've heard. They're not going out signing up any more producers. Um, there are some producers that they have committed to, but... Hey there, Tim from Tata Farms. <laughs> yeah. But there's kind of a, you know... I think a lot, what, uh, excuse me, what th some people think was what happened is that the market dropped. The market for organic milk did not drop, it's just that the milk supply grew faster than the market could absorb it. And so that's kind of what happened. So, um, so that's kind of what's going on right now is they're trying to boost, everybody's trying to boost sales for organic milk so they can, you know, get rid of the su surplus, bring it down. Um, but they're just, they're doing it cautiously, slowly and cautiously right now. Um, back when we got into organic milk, oh gosh, it was back in 2006, uh, is when we got into it. And even at that time, there was no guarantee that we were going to, they were going to take us. But yeah, hi from Southwest Iowa. 
Oh, you got a good herd average there, Jeff. Just curious, Jeff, um, are you uh, just, you know, you're still conventional yet? You haven't, like, started transitioning your herd yet or anything? Because um, the transition period for dairy takes four years, three years for the crops, and... Uh, um, one year for the cows. The cows have to be an organic feed for one full year before you transition. Um, before you trans 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 transition over to organic. So um, that's usually about what it is. So um, back back when we transitioned. You have not begun the trend. Okay, yeah. So it's it's three years for the crops, just so you know. Um, and uh, like you say, it's one year for the cows. The cows have to be on organic feed for um, an entire year. But you can what you can do to speed up the process um, is the last year of your crops is you you, you buy some organic feed, and uh, that last year you just feed your cows all. Of, all organic feed. Would it be worth it to have Jersey cows and use that milk to feed Holsteins instead of buying milk replacer? Um, just depends on um are you um Tim, are you are you organic? If you're organic, you well we don't feed any milk replacer to our cows or our calves because we can't get um, a real good um, organic based milk replacer so we just feed all milk to our calves straight from the straight from the receiver jar we get milk out and that's how we um, that's how we feed our calves um, they do have an organic milk replacer but it isn't like it's the greatest um, so we just we just feed regular milk to our bottle calves um, so yeah, um, but yeah, you can speed up your um, transition period in a dairy, like I say, if you feed your cows organic feed for one whole year, the last year. Um, there we are, we're back again, I lost you, I don't know what happened. Uh, I lost back. <laughs> That's why we went organic originally because um, the year that we tra we switched to organic milk was like conventional milk was like nine dollars a hundred weight that year. Man, that was tough to get that year. Those last few months, it was like hoofda. So. Um, yeah, it was the bear cat getting switched over. But I think it was worth it. It was definitely worth going organic. There were some changes though that we had to get used to, but um, I don't think milk and cows, I think milk and cows organically, in my opinion, is easier doing the crops organically. That, that's my opinion. There's really not a whole lot of difference. I mean, once you figure out like all the health things and the nutrition thing, um, dealing with the organic and the dairy side I think is easy. Uh, we, we've got it down to a science now, pretty much, how to, how to do things. We've been doing it for so long now that... Um, the crops... Like the soybeans are little, really what the trickiest thing, like the hay and the corn isn't too bad, but it's just like dealing with the soybeans. And the last couple of years we've had trouble with the small grain with wheat controlling weeds in there. But I, I'd say the dairy is actually easier than the crops in my opinion, but... Um, we don't have too much trouble like like with mastitis. We haven't had a lot of trouble with mastitis this winter. 
And someday I'll probably do a video on that, how, how we treat mastitis in, in cows. And um, just so everybody knows. I got another video coming out today. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's uploading right now as I speak. So, um, so just so you know, yeah, there's another video coming out here today. So... Um, almost done here loading for the cows. Yeah, the sun is coming out here a little bit, or it is kind of out. How do the straw bales work out? Oh, they worked out pretty good. There we go. Hello, Dean from North Carolina. You were going organic there until December. Now just organic crops, but having trouble with all that rain we had having. We're having it's raining now. Better rain than snow, I guess. But I guess too much rain is never a good thing. Not trying to farm. Hey Jose. Massachusetts. I have only been out east 20, 22 years ago I was out there once. It's different out there in the, uh, New England. Oh wow. Just finished combining the soybeans. Holy cow. Yeah, there's my brother over there. He's just finished cleaning the barn. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay if you got mis misspelled words. Yeah, sometimes using the mic, it does that. You know, I was a terrible speller. Still am a terrible speller. If it wasn't for autocorrect, sometimes. <laughs> Spelling wasn't one of my greatest things in school. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just heading up to the yard here. I gotta get the, uh, uh, I probably should do that. Maybe you guys, I'm gonna do that here quick before I go. You guys wanna see me start up the 720 here. I'll do that live. Hopefully I don't cut out in the shed here. So you guys can watch it live. I'm a little worried about going in a tin shed here, but we'll see what it looks like. Oh wow, still fields with beans down there in Ohio, wow. You had a field of beans left up here, they'd be done for. <laughs> they would be buried under a foot of snow. Okay guys, we're gonna go start up the uh, We're gonna go, oh, let me flip this around. On camera, my camera does not want to slip around here. Yeah, so I'm in the shed here right now. I'll flip it back. We're gonna start this thing up. I hope I don't cut out in here because I'm in a. Oh man, that's not a good thing. Let's see here if I could do this one hand in here, guys. Uh, this thing is kind of touchy. I'm going to choke this thing. There. Oh. This pony engine is kind of touchy sometimes. Sometimes you got to choke the heck out of it. Ah. Oh. And the starter does that thing on there. It's putting to life here, guys. I need to do a tune up on the pony motor. Whoa! 
Oh, it grinds a little bit there. Okay, see you later, Dean. Ah. There we go. <laughs> that fired up today good. Ah. Yeah, so uh. pick my sunglasses off. I got my contacts, if anybody noticed that. I finally got those the other day. Whoa. Yeah, so, um, I gotta go here in just a little bit. Um. Oh, yeah, I love that when I start that thing up. Yeah. It's kind of nice to be able to start up a two-cylinder every day like that. Yeah, I bought that thing, gosh, 20 years, yeah, this year would be 20 years ago I bought that tractor. I've done a lot of work to that thing. I've been, whoops, sorry about that. I thought I was had had my camera the other way. Let me flip you around. Yep. It's driving up here to the barn. We got Ginger, the kitty cat, out there waiting. Soaking up some sun. <laughs> so... Okay, guys, um, I gotta go here, um, keep moving along with chores here and stuff, so, uh, we just gotta feed in the barn, and then we'll be all done here for the day, so, uh, yeah, so look forward to that video, it should be coming out here sometime this evening, central time, um, so, yeah, you have a good day there too, Tim, and, uh, yeah, so look forward to that video, um, it's actually going to be a two-part series video, so it'll be another part coming out tomorrow. So I just thought I'd do a video for you, a live video today, so you guys could uh, see what was going around, going around on the farm today, because I didn't haven't done any other filmed anything today. So, anyways, I gotta run, guys. So uh, take care, and uh, I'll see you guys later. I'll catch you later. Yep. See. Ya.